what can we do uh, in 30 minutes, right? So we can try to do like uh, something else. Uh, let me take a look at something to do. Restart animation, okay. So if you take a look at this thing, so Jai release, maybe debug. Let's actually do debug. So if you die, meaning that the ball hits the floor, you don't have a ball for some period of time. And then it just appears out of nowhere, which is kind of meh, right? Who's going to buy such a game? Uh, what I was thinking is that I want you to have some cool animation of the ball reappearing on the, uh, on the bar. And uh, I had a couple of ideas regarding that. So essentially you can see that you have like uh, three balls in here. Right. So I can even restart. So this is how many like lives you have. I was thinking every time you die, right, we can play an animation of this one ball actually physically moving and sitting on a bar. Something like that. So this is going to be the restart animation. Right, like every time you waste a ball, here is another ball and you just like put it on the bar. Um, so, and it's, it, it should happen within the time of the death animation, right? So at some point you will just like uh, lose all of the balls and you won't have any balls. Happens. Shit happens. <laughs> okay, go. So, how are we gonna be doing all of that? How are we going to be doing all of that? Okay, so I wonder if I can quickly, you know, hack that. So this is the death cooldown. Uh, when I hit border bottom, right, I do the burst. I set the state to death, uh, death cooldown to this, and I reduce the amount of lives, right, so which is fine. Uh, then, do I, where do I use the death cooldown? So I probably use it, okay. So this is the update, uh, in here I just check the state, I decrement the update and as soon as it hits zero, I set it to ready. Um, the projectile dx dy is zero and it's always sort of... Hmm, this one is interesting. Uh, so... It is constantly anchored uh, to the bar, right? This is constantly anchored to the bar while you're dead. But when I render, when I render this entire thing, during the death, the bar is simply not rendered, right? I think, I think this is how it works. So death, I, I don't really see that. Um, yeah, state. Yeah, okay, so that's very interesting. Uh, every, if you're dead during the death, right, during the death, the projectile is uh, anchored on the bar. It is currently on the bar, but it's just simply not rendered, uh, which is rather interesting, like, huh. Which makes it rather easy uh, to work with, I think, because uh, I can just make it visible and I just animate its position according to like to how it works so we can do something about that mm -mm -mm. all right so let me think let me think so if we're gonna be rendering the uh, rectangle every time I feel like this entire thing doesn't really matter anymore. All right, so essentially we can say we always render this entire thing. And I found a really stupid thing. So I create a rect. Yeah. Look at these two lines. This is a very dumb code. <laughs> this is probably the dumbest code, code I've ever written. But it, I, mean, I mean, it actually turned into into this over a series of mutations, so to speak, right? You know how you have a code, you just adapt it to the new requirements, you keep like mutating it, changing it, and it like ends up like this. And nobody intentionally writes code like that. A code usually evolves into something like this. Can you hear the plane, by the way? 
Oh, you can't hear that. That's actually perfect. Right. So it's especially noticeable when several people work on the same code base, right? Because everyone is just like adapts the code to their situation, and it's sort of like, um, so the code sort of like grows the mold. So it's like a mold of the code, sort of speak. Oh, and there's another interesting effect of the code, right? So essentially quite often, like in a big code base, right? If you want to do something, you usually search for how it is already done somewhere in the code. And then you copy paste that piece of code into your place to do your specific job, but your specific job is slightly different. So you not only copy paste the chunk of code, you also mutate it slightly. So, and these kind of pieces of code, they have a tendency of multiplying and mutating. I think I already talked about uh, about that like some some time ago, like a really long time ago. But yeah, so they're sort of like a, like a genes or memes, right? So I think they're comparable to memes. So your p small piece of code in a big code base becomes a meme that gets multiplied over time because people look for examples on how to do certain thing and it gets mutated over time. So, and it's a very interesting effect. Uh, right. And if you actually do uh, a certain thing in a very bad way, nobody's gonna fix that particular piece of code. The people will continue copy pasting bad way of doing things. Right, because nobody got time to analyze and realize that, oh, it's a, it's a bad way to do things, it's, it's slow or it's error porn or something like that. It will just copy paste it and it just gets multiplied and just like infects the whole code base. So this is how usually it usually happens. All right, so uh, let me, let me think. Okay, so we are always rendering this stuff. Uh, let me see. Yep, so as you can see, it's just rendered in here. Uh, what's interesting is that I think we have to anchor, we have to constantly anchor uh, the project, the, the projectile when we're ready, but not when we're dead. Not when we're dead. Uh -huh. So we, we anchor it in here as well, so that's totally fine. All right, I have the following idea. So when I am dead, when I'm, when I'm hitting the floor, I need to set the position of projectile to the, to the projectile in the health bar. Right, so that's what I have to do. Uh, that's what I have to do. Uh, border, bottom, border, border. What is this? A CSS or something? Okay. Mm -hmm. So let me see if this is correct, more or less. If that at least does what I expect, it does. Okay, please die. Okay, it stays in here and then it will jump in here. That's cool. It's pretty cool. That's actually pretty dramatic. Look at that. Poof. Yo, this is so cool. Uh, could you see that? Wait a second. J just look how dramatic it is. I like that. <laughs> I really like that. This is so dramatic. <laughs> Mm. It's just like, look, you failed. You failed. Uh, and to be fair, and may maybe this is from where we have to bring it back. You know what I mean? Sounds like a pretty interesting idea, actually. Yeah. Um. If it fades into nothing, eh, I'm not sure. Ah! Okay. Mm, so we'll, I'll need to think how we're gonna go from there. So actually, animating it from here to like back in here 
Sounds like a, also an interesting idea. Hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna think about that idea. Maybe I'm gonna do something with that. Uh, but I'm gonna implement my original idea. Uh, right. My original idea was actually setting it to one of the lives. As you can see, I decrease uh, the amount of lives left in here, right? I decrease the amount of lives. And I just need to set the position somewhere where the life is. But the question is, how do I render everything? How do I render lives? So render... Uh -huh. Okay, so this is how we render lives. <clears throat> so this is I. Mm -hmm. So I can probably copy paste this thing. See, I'm copy pasting the code. Like, this is literally what I was talking about. Right, this is a piece of code that just got multiplied and infected the rest of my code. Right, so I need to know how I calculate the position of the single life in that bar. Right, this is how I do that. And the easiest thing for me to do in here is just like, yeah, just, just give it to me. Um, all right, and what I can do is essentially uh, approach underscore i in here is going to be the lives. All right. Uh -huh. So did it, did it work? I think it didn't really work properly. Or approach is used, but ne uh, oh yeah, yeah, so it has to be something like this. Uh huh. Already, already, already. So we're getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. Please die. Okay, so that's cool. So as you can see, it doesn't disappear because, yeah, so when you die, one life does not disappear immediately. This is because it, it is literally that projectile that we moved in here. So what we have to do now, right, what we have to do now is we have to set the proj uh, dx. We have to constantly set proj dx to be, um, well, that's very interesting. We have to direct it towards the, the anchor somewhere. Update. Uh -huh. So this is the death, and the anchor is computed like this, All right? So that's the position of the anchor. Uh huh. Anchor X Y. So I might as well actually put it into like a separate procedure. But it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, this is the anchor. And what I can do in here is take a projectile uh, like anchor X, subtract projectile X, right? And set it to DX, right? And this one could be something like Y. Right. So this is a really dumb way of doing that. Right. And it's probably not gonna... Um, how to say that? It's probably not gonna match properly the death cooldown animation. But this is just like a general idea on how it can, how it can go. Uh, attempt to add... Why is it saying that to me? Undeclared an anchor. Oh, okay. So sometimes you have a really weird bugs in J. They're really difficult to reproduce. Uh huh. All right. So let's see. Uh, I want to actually fail somewhere here. Oh shit! Nothing actually happened. I think this is because we do not update uh, Proj X on death. 
Right. Yeah, so this is where we update the position. We do that through the horizontal collision, vertical collision and stuff like that. Right, so that's totally fine. So, and that's probably where we have to do this thing as well. Okay. So essentially we have to do approach x, uh, maybe something like plus equal, uh, approach dx multiplied by that, and then something like this. Did it work? Okay, so let's try to recompile that. Hmm. Okay, something failed. I'm not, no program, uh, well, the language is not finished, as you can see. Sometimes it fails in really strange ways. <laughs> it's kind of funny, not gonna lie. But yeah. So like none of these things match up, but I mean, like at least we have this thing working uh, to some extent, right? Uh, so, but th there should be like some time to wait Yeah, it is working. I didn't see any poke champs in the chat though. All right. Uh, so let me see where we are rendering all that. Um, I kind of like uh, the way it pops to the bar. Uh, maybe I don't know. I wanted to actually. I don't know. Um, so there is a very fixed time. There is a very fixed time it takes uh for for the death animation right we, we wait a fixed time and i would like to actually you know the ball follow the bar right so the player should be able to move around and the ball should sort of like curve and follow this thing and just like pop into there which means that the death animation is not going to be always the same time you know what i mean right so maybe we can adjust the velocity so it always takes the same amount of time, no matter how like you wiggle around, right? We, we sort of solve some mathematical equation to make sure that no matter how you move, we always pick such velocity that makes the ball hit this thing at the same time anyway. That is actually very interesting. So, but if you want the ball to curve, that equation becomes kind of difficult. Right. So what I'm thinking is that we can sort of change the velocity of the ball towards the, uh, the bar and every unit of time increase it. Right. So that means the uh, rebirth animation is going to take different amount of time, but you never be able to escape the ball indefinitely. Right. Because it's, it's going to speed up over time. Um, why may, why not allow the player to escape the ball indefinitely? What's wrong with that though? Right, is it something wrong to... Because uh, maybe for the player it's going to be some sort of a fun, but then the player got bored of that and it will just stop and this thing will, will just hit the, um, hit the bar anyway. So there's nothing wrong with allowing the player to sort of, um, you know escape the ball indefinitely what's what's wrong with that if you think about it right what's wrong with that? there's nothing wrong actually so this is the game it's supposed to be fun if the player having fun well the player should pay money right you're having fun for free well and i will never get paid for that but anyway so uh it's just like <laughs> what the fuck is going on with me <laughs> um isn't it easier to freeze the bar or is it not the option I did that at the beginning. It was frustrating as fuck. Because here's the thing. Uh, essentially, uh, when it hits the floor, you can't control it anymore. And it just feels wrong. It doesn't feel great. Uh, because it feels like you're being like, really heavily punished. You hit the floor and it's just like it, it, it paralyzes you. And it's just like, it, it's not really pleasant. Uh, you you want to be able to still control the bar to feel that you're still in control of the situation. You know what I mean? 
so it just I it was like that in the beginning, and then I got rid of that because it didn't feel great. <sighs> okay. Mm. Okay, so uh, let's actually try to change this entire thing. Uh, mm, 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 mm. So I suppose what we need to do, we need to get rid of the death cooldown, right? We're gonna set the um, uh, the state to ready only when the ball is too close to the anchor right so the ball should chase the anchor uh, until it's possible all right so this is error 275 death cooldown okay so we just set it in here we update all of that stuff in here and let's just like uh recompile this entire thing and declare it uh 311 uh -huh. So we don't really have to do that, we don't really have to do that, we just calculate the position of the anchor, we calculate the velocity, and I suppose the velocity just should be the same, right? And then we just update everything, and if, um, let's put it this way, proc x minus anchor x uh, absolute uh, plus absolute y if it's less than some sort of like epsilon epsilon only then we set the state to ready that's a very cool way of doing it actually uh, e minus minus six why not so all of them are floats right yeah they're all of them are floats they must be floats uh -huh. so what's wrong with that we parsed a declaration so we expected a semicolon really you do not support a scientific notation uh what about vertical falling down of the ball with almost stopping getting closer to the bottom line so players should catch it just dropping in other ideas we'll see we'll see um so different ideas are good but it's also important that they feel good for the player right because as i said for example stopping the player was extremely frustrating so it was not a pleasant game it was an experience even though it doesn't really change that much right it's just like it doesn't really change that much but it just doesn't feel good we'll, we'll see um, okay, so I, I can always do something like this. Right, but it's kind of strange that it doesn't support scientific notation. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. Yeah! Well, yeah, I, I know why this happens, but... Uh... <laughs> Oh, this is the funny shit ever. <laughs> uh, yeah. We should make it a constant. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so. Uh, it's pretty funny. Uh, ABS. Right, so we set the state. Uh, right, if it's less, we can actually make it like this. Right, let's actually make it like this. Uh, and of course, it shouldn't really slow down. Right, it shouldn't really slow down. Uh, but slowing down is just easier to implement right now. Why are you not... This is so weird. Is there is some sort of a bug in here, which is like a hazing bug. Right. Mm-hmm. Um... Mm-hmm. Though you know what, this is like 0, 0 0.001 is thousands of the pixel. It's a thousands of the pixel. So I suppose uh, what we have to do in here is just like two. It has to be like a really huge epsilon um, for this thing to to work properly. 
What the hell is this bug? Okay, so that should should be fine. Ah, ah. Okay. Yeah, okay, it worked. So we, we managed to restart this entire thing. All right, so it's restartable. So the only thing we need to do now is to make sure that um, this thing sort of like goes in an opposite direction. But in, in any case, uh, this is the distance. What we have to do is to normalize this entire stuff, right? So we have to take approach dx and just square it plus proj dy, uh, proj dy, and then sqrt. And this is sort of like a length. Uh, right, so this is the length. And then I want to divide by length. But it makes sense to divide by length only if it's greater than zero. Right, that's quite important to remember. Uh, proj dx, proj dy, divided by length. Right, it is greater than zero. And then we can do another thing. We can multiply it by uh, a constant velocity. Let's say it's going to be 100. Uh, we can even call it something like um, rebirth restart velocity. Restart velocity. And restart velocity is going to be 100. There we go. Uh -huh. That's kind of interesting. Okay, did it work? It seemed to be working. We can actually speed it up over time. 100 is too slow. I can I can tell you for sure. So. You know what I want to do? I want to set this thing to params. You know why? Because then I'll be able to um, modify it in real time. Uh -huh. So that's going to be epic. That's going to be epic. So I'm going to set like five. Uh -huh. But then we'll have to run the debug version. I mean, we're already running the debug version. Okay, so let's see. Oh, that was funny. It's just like twitched a little bit. <laughs> okay, uh, so what I want to do actually is maybe increase the epsilon. Um, restart. Let's call it margin. Restart margin. Mm -hmm. So it's two, and let's say it's gonna be like around ten, right? So essentially, what we consider the uh, the restart, it's when it's like around here, um, and it's actually some of both of the things. So. Maybe it should be like not really the sum, it should be the distance, if you know what I mean. Right. Yeah, let's actually do it like that. So it's gonna be dx, and this is gonna be dy. Uh -huh. dx and dy. And then what we have is dx multiplied dy, dy, and this is the restart uh, distance then. Distance. Yeah. There we go. So let's go. <laughs> did you write the final format myself? Yes, I did. Uh, there you go. Here is the code that parses this entire thing. Yeah. All right. And in release mode, it actually bakes those constants into the executable. So the compiler has the an opportunity to fold the constants and stuff like that, right? So, but at debug mode, uh, it actually allows you to hot reload them. So, uh, all right, let me see. This is not really what I wanted, but 
that was so satisfying, holy shit. Uh, just a second. Uh, like, Alright, so let's actually make it 75. Alright. Uh, yep. Maybe it should speed up over time. Because it, kind of, it was kind of okay. So should it be faster? Uh, 600. Let's say 600. So let me reload this entire thing. So when you don't have any lives anymore, right? So it's gonna create like a. Yeah. Uh, did you respect the file encoding? I don't think it's that important right now. Like, why do you need the file encoding? And what does it mean, respecting file encoding? I'm not really sure. All right. So, this is basically the idea that I initially wanted. Right. So, how good of, the, of an idea that is, that's, a, that's an interesting question. So, what do you guys think? Is that a good implementation? I think I need to commit that and let you guys play with this idea. Uh, will the bar stall when the last life is consumed? We can try to do that. Uh, but that requires implementing the game over condition, I think. Mm -hmm. So, but that's uh, like a completely separate task. Okay, so let me try to see if the... Um, mm, do I already have it somewhere? Oh, I think I already have it, okay. Um, <laughs> that's something new, yeah. All right, so let me, let me refresh and let's see if it works in WebAssembly, right? Uh, yeah, it works in WebAssembly. So I kind of... Well, this is like a really weird way of doing that. Um, did it not refresh properly or something? Oh, we have shit ton of errors in here as well. Okay, <laughs> so I don't know why, but... Um, maybe something was not updated properly yet. Uh, I didn't see any errors, so it compiled perfectly, so... That's the conclusion I have in here. It compiled absolutely perfectly. It's something with the cache. It must have been something with the cache. Okay. So let me let me try that one more time. And a boom. That is broken. And that actually sheds so many errors. Um, last time I watched uh, SQ... Ah, well, that explains everything. <laughs> I mean, sure. Uh, yeah, of course. So last time I watched, you were accessing the constants using the functions. How did you get around them? That's a good question. Uh, let me show you. So here is the two files. Here's the static stuff, right? These things are static and these are dynamic. I simply made them variables, right? So they are mutable variables and there is a function called sync param bars, uh, which essentially just gets through all of the parameters in the hash table and sets each individual variable. So from the syntact syntactical point of view, they are not distinguishable from just variables. Uh, wasn't doesn't know how to screw it. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we can fix that. Uh, well, JS. Uh -huh. SQRTF. SQRT. Uh -huh. So that should be fine. This should be fine for sure. So now we should know how to squirt. Maybe, like, do I really need to squirt? That's a, that's a good question. Maybe I don't need to squirt. Right, so I only need for length. I just need to normalize. Well, I mean, I kind of need that. 
That's that's for sure. All right. So. Mm, e, that's cool. Not ten percent satisfying, but that's fine. So when you just like plane. Uh huh. Okay. Cool. So let me try to commit that now. Mm -hmm. mm, so this is the restart animation. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Implement uh, a more interesting restart animation. Right, so, and I'm gonna push that right into the repo. So you should be able to access the latest version in here, right? You should be able to access the latest version in here, but it's gonna be available like in a, in a minute or two because the, like GitHub need to redeploy it or something. Uh, yeah, so, and once it's redeployed, let me know if it's interesting or satisfying or anything like that. So, Acorn1010 uh, rated us with 58 raiders. Thank you so much for, for the rate. How are you guys doing? We're just playing Breakout in here, all right? So, and what we just implemented, we implemented a restart animation. Basically, when you die, right, as you can see, you get restarted with, like, you get a new ball in here. So, that's basically what's going on. So that's what we implemented, which is kind of cool, I think. Uh -huh. nah. Could be, maybe it could be a bit faster, right? To be fair, when you're just playing, you don't really want to be punished too much, right? So, yeah, I think it's kind of cool, right? Mm -hmm. So let me try to play that. Oh yeah, I know that the the arrows don't work anymore. Like I intentionally broke them. <laughs> so <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to fix them, right? Because uh, the codes for keys has have to be consistent between different platforms, and it's kind of difficult to achieve um, that between X11 and Wasm, because Wasm literally not supported, <laughs> so... Uh, by the way, I have a, a lot of different ideas for this game, so I want to add bonuses, right? So basically, maybe at some level of combo, you increase a probability of getting a, like a additional bonus from a target, from destroying a target. And those bonuses could be additional life or making the bar longer or changing the speed of the of the ball, you know, the, the usual stuff, uh, the usual things. So also could be kind of interesting. Uh, what did you use to build this? I used the programming language created by Jonathan Blow, but whatever I managed to do, is actually not, how would say that, intrinsic to that language. I could have done absolutely the same, the same thing in C, right? So it is possible for me to do this entire thing completely in C, and it wouldn't even look that different, and it wouldn't be even more difficult to maintain, I would say, right? So the only diff the only reason I did it in J in the language uh, created by Jonathan Blow is because I'm just testing this language, right? So I didn't really use anything particularly special in this language, except maybe metaprogramming to how to reload the configuration, but apart from that, not really. So, yeah. Okay, so... Uh... What do you guys think about the restart animation? Does it feel, does it feel satisfying? I think it feels pretty satisfying, especially if you just keep playing and well, something something's broken. Oh, I mean it's it's old versions probably. It's not updated for anyone. It's pretty good. Okay, thank you. All right, so that's cool. It's really cool that I can just like take this thing and share it with the viewers without sharing any you know SAS executables. I could have just like made an executable, but it, I mean, using executables kind of sus. Uh, the only thing I don't like is that sometimes the 
projectile is behind the target, so I don't particularly like that. So I wonder how can we fix that. Uh, so here's the particles, then... Yeah, I really don't like that. I think... I think we should render it here. Right, so let me restart this in that here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and yeah, okay, so that's cool. Uh, do you start feel slow? Would it be possible to make it speed up depending on the distance it needs to take? Maybe. I'll, I'll think about that. Oh, yeah. So the most important thing is that we have the base for, for this entire thing. I can just make it fast. Right. Uh, what about thousand? I could have just like code reloaded. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. right. Is that better? So this is like a thousand pixels per second. That's how fast it is. I can make them faster. So, if it's going to be too fast, uh, we should also change the uh, the epsilon, the restart distance. Yeah, because it starts twitching, as you can see, right? So it starts twitching. That means on a pretty big speed, it has to be like 20 maybe. I didn't have to reveal it to be fair. Right, I can just do this. Mm. Uh, if I die on the right hand of the screen. Oh, okay. So let me actually try to do that. Uh-huh. I see. So what about 2000? So we're going to actually make it super fast. Super fast. Like, I need to get into the habit of hot reloading. Uh -huh. Kind of not. What about five? Uh -huh. All right, so if I'm a little bit closer. Supersonic speed, okay. What about 3000? Uh -huh. So this is 3000. Pretty fast. What about that bar, that side? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna give it a try. Uh, <clears throat> check if it works on uh, on Wazoo and we'll see okay. um, make ball restart super fast Speedrunners are going to pick the left side here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why not? Sure. Uh, that's totally fine. It's kind of cool, actually. I don't really like how it feels like. Yeah. So, I guess that's it for today. Uh, thanks everyone who's watching me right now. It was actually super fun. I really appreciate that. Have a good one, and I see you all on the next recreation programming session. So, yeah, that was super cool. All right. Thanks everyone for watching. Love you. Mwah.